All right, now let's bump up the firepower even more notch and get into the rifles. The first one is the SR M1903. Now, of course, the SR stands for sniper rifle. And here it is in game, a bolt action rifle. When fitted with a scope for sniping, this model is highly praised for its accuracy. All right. Yes, this is where the precision of weapons is gonna go up through the roof. A statistic that I'm not really emphasizing very much in this review. So here's it compared to its original counterpart from Resident Evil 4, OG. And of course, the real life counterpart is based on the Springfield M1903A4. Alrighty then. Now the sniper rifle becomes available right at this first merchant right here. And something to emphasize, and I mentioned this before when I went over the scopes initially, but again, you can get the scope, the regular scope, for free if you purchase this rifle outright as soon as it becomes available. Alright, so here's Leon holding it. Look at that beast. Nice long rifle. And just something to emphasize also, this rifle is very skinny and only takes one square worth of width in your inventory. So, one cool thing about aiming with rifles in this game, even if they don't have scopes, it converts into first person and you aim down the sights. So, probably the most realistic of aiming a rifle in the Resident Evil series thus far. So, here we go. Look how stable that is. And loading each bullet into the rifle. All right, let's try using it with the scopes. First with the regular scope. There you go. This thing is tiny on this rifle. Alright, and now let's try it with the high precision scope. This will probably be more adequate for it. Yeah, now this is the full scale rifle. <laughs> Beautiful. Alright, and finally the biosensor scope. What is that, radioactive drops or something? What the hell? Alrighty, I'm looking forward to testing this out. I'm gonna test the rifles on a brute. The same as the shotguns. Jesus criminy. All right, so it took 15 rifle rounds to defeat the brute with no upgrades in standard mode. In standard mode. This isn't a very strong rifle out the gate, it feels like. Okay, so when it comes to the rifles, I'm gonna emphasize something specific, which is gonna double the amount of tests I'm gonna do. So, as you can see on the right, we got perks for the weapons. This goes for nearly all weapons. One of the ones of this one, and for the other rifle as well, I'm sure, is it's three times the power against weak points. And since that last test took me 15 shots, this is a great opportunity to really emphasize on that perk. So, I'm gonna go straight for the head only in this test with the same firepower, and if the statistics check out, this should take around only five shots. So, let's try. And, to make it more accurate, I'm gonna go ahead and use a scope for this test. Here we go. Ooh. 
It actually only took four shots. So just a little more than what it claimed or the statistics were just wide enough maybe to allow for that. Anyway, point is, it took less than a third of the time to defeat the brute if I went straight for the head. Just more emphasis like I tell you guys from time to time. Even though I'm doing this the hard way and always going for the torso shot, it's always for the purpose of giving you a very basic average. But if you're smart and a good gamer, you should always be going for the head. All right, now let's upgrade this baby and see what it's capable of. All right, time to sell our SRM-1903. Only 6,000 pesetas. It's a cheap rifle. Considering how old it is, I guess that makes sense. Now to repurchase it, naturally, it'll be 12,000 pesetas. There you go. Why not try your hand and wish your enemies sweet dreams from afar with a bullet straight through their heads. <laughs> <laughs> that mock laughter, man. Now to tune it up. Here we go. Dazzled, are you? <laughs> Our craftsmanship demands no less. See how that feels, mate. A fellow like yourself should notice the difference right away. There you are, as you wish. Try that on for size. You've exhausted our normal... All right, so the exclusive for the bolt-action rifle is an increase of firepower two times. Oh, boy. You have it doesn't get any better than that. It's a veritable work of art, mate. So, 5.3 times 2, 10.6. That is the total firepower. And this combined with the scope and going for the critical shot with the three times the power? <laughs> oh my gosh, now let's test it out. Okie dokie. Now let's test this power heart on a brute, both firing at the torso and the head. Wow. All right, so I don't even have to go for the head. It still only took four shots from this thing to defeat the brute once I fully upgraded it. That's the power of that times two power upgrade, I guess. Yeah. It's like took nearly a quarter less of shots. Okay, let's still demonstrate going for the weak point, the head. Get fucked. All right, one shot from the SRM-1903 against a brute, full upgrades, at least in standard mode. Don't know if that would be the case in hardcore professional, but hell, this is a powerhouse once you fully upgrade it. And yeah, they've gotten way better at making bolt action rifles faster since Resident Evil 4 OG. So I've grown a little more appreciative of them. However, I still prefer semi-automatics ultimately. All right. That is gonna conclude the SR M1903. Now for the next and last sniper rifle, the Stingray. I'm glad they gave the semi-automatic rifle a nickname. All right, here it is in game. A widely adopted semi-automatic rifle. Its carbon fiber reinforced parts make it lightweight and rugged. All right, now then, here it is compared to its original counterpart in the OG RE4. And of course, it is based off of the Heckler & Koch SL-8. Apparently it's a hybrid of the SL-8-1 and the SL-8-4 with certain parts. All right, the Stingray doesn't become available until chapter seven in the main game. Just buy it from the merchant, like normal. All right, let's go ahead and test it out. First without a scope, aiming down the sights. Shit. Nah, let's add a scope onto it. By the way, I failed to emphasize that unlike the stocks of certain weapons, I'm not including the scopes at all when it comes to total pricing. But I gotta show you what it's like to rebuy a couple of the scopes because the merchant does have some special lines. Oops, wrong one. That's the cool thing about custom parts. You can select which weapon 
if you go from the part, or if you go from the weapon, you could choose which scope. All right, here we go with the regular scope. Nice. And now let's try the high power scope. There we go. That looks a lot better. Oh yeah. And finally, the bioscope. Or bio biosensor scope. Eh. I swear it looks like a video camera combined with a game controller. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and test out the Stingray on a Brute. In the same fashion I did the bolt action rifle, I'll test it two ways, both for the body and the head. Alrighty, so took only 12 shots from the Stingray to defeat the Brute. I remember the bolt action rifle only had a starting firepower of 2.5. Well, this is 3.3, so it makes sense. Alright, now let's see the difference if we go for the head. <laughs> Alright, only three shots. Again, a little more than times three, according to the math. That was a quarter of the amount of shots it took. Interesting. Alright, well, let's go ahead and tune up this baby. Now let's sell our beloved Stingray for 15,000 pesetas. Thank you. So naturally, it's gonna cost us 30,000 to repurchase it. Here we go down here. There you are. 30,000 pesetas. What I've got. This gun turns heads into pumpkins, mate. Take this for a rampage through the patch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. And while I'm here, let me show you his voice lines when you repurchase the scopes. So I gotta sell those real quick. All right, so first the regular scope. You're a man of good taste. Oh, no special line at all. Figures, it's just a generic scope, nothing special about it. However, all my wares. <laughs> You're trying to thread a needle with a bullet there, mate. <laughs> yeah. And finally, the biosensor one. Get a load of this. <laughs> You'll see things you wish you hadn't with that. <laughs> wow. Nice subliminal message there, merchant. Okay. Uh, now that I've repurchased the Stingray, let's tune it up. Here we go. See how that feels, Fellow like yourself should notice the difference right away. Try that on for size. See how that feels, mate. Fellow like yourself should notice the difference right away. There you are, as you wished. Dazzled, I you've exhausted. And check it out. Something. Just like its OG counterpart, it has a very unique exclusive upgrade. It increases the fire rate by two times. Here we you go. Ticket, do you? Well, We've given this one all we have to give. Come back. All right. So with a fire rate of 0.92 times 2, we can expect it to be 1.84, which doesn't really mean much just by the sheer number because the fire rate is not based on a second. It's just based off the game's internal statistic. We're not going to see anything until we actually fire it. Now let's test it out. This is going to be wild. <laughs> any faster than it could be regarded as a machine gun, maybe. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's unload this whopper on a brute.
All right, so it took eight shots from the fully upgraded Stingray to defeat the Brute. So not nearly as powerful as the SRM-1903, but to compensate, you gotta admit, with that fire rate, I was able to get my shots off really quickly, and I still defeated him really quickly. So yeah, that's the trade-off right there. Now, for the final and funnest test, some headshots with this rifle. I just unloaded on his ass. All right, only two shots from the Stingray. Again, not as powerful as the bolt action, but come on, just one more shot, not bad. It's really dependent on your preference. If you want nothing but firepower, go for the bolt action. But if you want a little bit more consistency or like a safer weapon, I would go with the semi-automatic and that's my personal style. All right, that is gonna conclude the semi-automatic rifle, also known as the Stingray. And that's it for sniper rifles, but that's not it for rifles. All right, now for the one and only assault rifle, the CQBR, which makes a return from Resident Evil 3 remake. Now, you must be wondering, why didn't I review this after the submachine guns, like I traditionally do in, like, all other weapon reviews that have both submachine guns and assault rifles? Well, that's because, for the first time in Resident Evil history, an assault rifle uses the same ammunition as a sniper rifle, which I guess, in real life, is more accurate. They both use the same ammunition, I don't know exactly what it is, like something-something NATO rounds, or could be way off. It's not really my obligation to know what exactly the caliber or the bullet is. I just know they both use rifle rounds in this game. So I'm putting it basically in the same category as the sniper rifles, but it's an assault rifle. So that's why in the very beginning of the category, I just said rifles. I didn't specifically say sniper rifle when I introduced the category. All right, enough about that. Let's get a good look at it. All right, and here it is in game, of course. The CQBR assault rifle is described as a fully automatic rifle. Its optimal barrel length balances power and weight to allow for accurate shooting. Alrighty then. This is not featured in the original Resident Evil 4 at all. So, just to compare its real life counterpart, just like RE3 Remake, this is the Colt Model 933. Alrighty then. And yeah, regardless it's an assault rifle, it's still just like the other rifles and it has three times the power against weak points. So I will test this out, just like the sniper rifles. Here's Leon holding it. Looking pretty good. Looks a bit scruffed up. It's been through some action. <laughs> so this rifle is another weapon that you can collect in the regular game. This is in the library second floor after you complete it with Ashley first. If you return here with Leon, and you have the cube device, then you can get it out of this puzzle right here. There you go. So, since this is the last collectible weapon in my review, it's worth mentioning, if you miss these weapons at the locations that they're at, then they will be available from the first merchant after that point that you come across. So now, this is obviously gonna fire much faster than the sniper rifles being an assault rifle. Here we go. It really seems they only did the tactical reloads for the pistols for most of this game. Alrighty then. Now let's try it with parts and get a look at it. That actually looks like one of the most appropriate weapons for this scope to go on. <laughs> it's oversized. <laughs> Cursed edition. Oh my god, the instability is real. Alright, that doesn't look too bad. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and test this out on a brute. Both the torso and the head. Ugh. 
All right, so it took 19 rifle rounds from the CQBR to take down the Brute. Makes sense because this has half a point less firepower than the SR M1903 did. So that's why it took more than that. And at starting point, anyway, this is the weakest rifle, but it has the highest fire rate right out the gate. So that compensates for it. All right, let's go for headshots though. All right, five headshots to take down the brute with the CQBR. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, well, this thing is probably gonna be insane when I fully upgrade it. All right, let's sell the CQBR assault rifle, 20,000 pesetas, so it's gonna be a hefty purchase to rebuy it. Here it is, 40,000 pesetas. Not the most expensive gun so far, but pretty up there. All yours, stranger. No special line for it. How lame. All right, here we go with the upgrades. This kind of work is about finesse, stranger. Little bit goes a long way. You'll see. See how that feels, mate. A fella like yourself should notice the difference right away. You've exhausted our normal All right, range of so the exclusive upgrade for this rifle is an increase in firepower by one and a half times. Which, when looking at the max firepower, this still doesn't get very high up there in the firepower department. But I guess it would be busted if it did, because this is an automatic rifle. So, you gotta think about that. That is a top-notch weapon. You re all right, so we look at the stats with a total firepower of 3.4 times one and a half. Let's see, half of 3.4 is 1.7. So 3.4 plus 1.7 is 5.1. Okay, and using the statistic of three times the power against weak point, 15.3. Now, you notice in the tests in the past, the reason why it took even less than what the math predicted is because going for the head in general causes more damage to the enemy. So that's probably why that happened. But anyway, let's go ahead and test this weapon out with full upgrades. Let me reload it to its full capacity. A nice increased reload speed. 32. Seems a little more accurate to a weapon like this. All right, here we go. I guess because it's an automatic, they didn't bother to increase the firing speed, which would have been nice. <laughs> Shit. Alrighty then. Let's test this madhouse on a brute. So eight shots from the CQBR to take down a brute with full upgrades. Going for the torso only, no weak points or critical hits. All right, now let's get a true test of going for the critical spot. We can almost predict it's only gonna take two. Yep, go figure, two shots. All right, while out the gate, it's initially one of the weakest rifles in the game. It does outmatch the Stingray in raw firepower with its exclusive upgrade. But this is a very unstable rifle, so that's probably its weakest point. All right, that is ultimately gonna conclude all rifles, both sniper and assault. Now to compare all the rifles to each other. All right, let's turn the heat up from medium to high and get into my favorite weapon category, the Magnums. Now, I'm gonna go on a small tangent real quick to appease the gun nuts out there. I am fully aware that Resident Evil or Capcom, or maybe even the entire video game industry, have fooled the general populace into believing that Magnum is a type of weapon, which is actually incorrect. What makes a weapon or a gun Magnum class is actually the caliber or the rounds that it fires, not the gun itself. 
We've had revolvers in the past that fire 45 ACP rounds. Those aren't Magnum class rounds. So, I get it you gun nerds out there, Resident Evil has never really gotten it right. And if you look at the one right next to it, how is this, which is clearly a 1911 pistol, a Magnum. See, yeah, I get it, I completely understand, but at the same time, it doesn't affect me or my life personally that they get it incorrect or they call it a weapon class and they fooled entire generations into believing so. It really doesn't affect me. I understand if it affects you guys, but some of you cry a lot on the internet, I have to say. <laughs> Anyway, went on a wild tangent there, and because I love the Resident Evil franchise for what it is, and don't really care how accurate the weapons are to their real-life counterparts, I'm gonna stick with calling these weapons Magnums, and separating them in their respective categories. So, for the first Magnum, we got the Broken Butterfly. Alright, here it is in game. A top break magnum revolver. While this vintage piece was developed over a hundred years ago, it packs more than enough power to rival modern firearms. Alright, now let's compare it to its OG counterpart real quick. Alright, and of course, this magnum is based off the Smith & Wesson Schofield. Alright, so the Broken Butterfly doesn't show up until Chapter 7. I should also mention that the moment the Broken Butterfly becomes available at the Merchant when you first enter the castle, it actually comes at a discounted price. So if you want to purchase it, that would be the best time to do so. Get a good look at Leon holding it. Nice. Alright, so let's go ahead and give it a test with no upgrades to start. One of the most realistic Magnum reloads I've ever seen. <laughs> Although that one wasn't, because all the bullets ejected, but then he only put in one, and it acted as all, as if he had a speed loader. Alright, well, I'm gonna test all the Magnums on a chainsaw Ganado. Stay down, all right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right, so I only took four shots from the Broken Butterfly with no upgrades to defeat the Chainsaw Ganado. Not bad. All right, now let's go back to the merchant, give you guys the full price, and test it out with full upgrades. All right, let's go ahead and sell the Broken Butterfly for 21,000 pesetas. So naturally, it should cost 42,000 to rebuy it. Sure enough. All right, 42,000. I see you have an eye for things. Guns not just about shooting, it's about reloading. You'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> word for word, I love it. All right, now to tune it up. Here we go. Let's you get you the price. You, yeah? Dazzled, are you? <laughs> Our craftsmanship demands no less. There you are, as you wish. We're starting to get an idea of your tastes, friend. See how that feels, mate. Better like yourself should... <sighs> Alright, so the exclusive upgrade for the Broken Butterfly will increase the firepower by one and a half times. And it's quite a hefty upgrade, I have to say. Oh, well, well, we've given this one all we have to give. Treat it with the respect it deserves, yeah? So, with a power of 27 times one and a half, your total firepower is gonna be 40.5. Wow, this is a very powerful weapon now. All right, let's reload it. <laughs> there we go. It's too bad they can't get to the point of realism when it comes to the capacity of a Magnum revolver. Imagine like a 10 loader revolving chamber. <laughs> now let's test it out again, here we go. Pretty nice fire rate now. <laughs> All right. So, let's go ahead and test the fully upgraded Broken Butterfly on the Chainsaw Ganado now. This? 
Nice. So it only took two shots from the Broken Butterfly fully upgraded to take down the Chainsaw Ganado. Go figure with the amount of firepower that is now, huh? <laughs> All right. Now, I'm not finished with this. So if I didn't make clear already, like in previous polls on YouTube or anything, starting with this review, for the first time ever, instead of doing my traditional Magnum headshot with only the most powerful Magnum or the most powerful looking Magnum in the game, I am now going to do a critical headshot with all of the Magnums of the game. So let's test out an explosive critical headshot on a standard standard Ganado with the Broken Butterfly fully upgraded. Caminar. <laughs> Headshot! All right, that was pretty awesome. Instant, gone. It's like her body slammed the ground so hard. She didn't know what was coming. All right, well, that is gonna conclude the Broken Butterfly. Now for the next Magnum, the Killer 7. And here it is in game, an all stainless steel magnum. It has a laser sight mounted on top as standard and boasts both high power and accuracy. Yeah, that's correct when you look at the precision, of course. Laser aim making it good. And of course, as with the OG, the name of the weapon, Killer 7, is in reference to a game that Capcom made. Let's compare it to its OG counterpart, like we are right here. All right. And the weapon itself, in real life, is the AMT Hardballer, <laughs> which is a very recognizable weapon if you've seen the first Terminator movie, right here. And in the remake, they designed it more closely resembling it than its OG counterpart. <laughs> so they really wanted to make that reference there. Now, of course, this is like a variant of the really well-known Colt 1911, if you didn't know. All right, that's going to do it. Now, this weapon becomes available in Chapter 13 when you first get into the island. However, if you hold off on buying it for three chapters and wait until Chapter 16, you could get a 40% discount off of it. Now, these discounts, I did miss a few of them at this point in the review. So what I'm going to do to compensate is near the end of the review, I will provide you guys a chart of all the discounts that are provided in the game and what they do. All righty, for now... Let's check out Leon holding it. Looking really nice as ever. And let's test this beauty out. First with no upgrades. Here we go. So one thing I noticed right away is it has a slightly slower fire rate than the Broken Butterfly did at starting point. And being a pistol-like weapon, he reloads it just like all the regular handguns of the game. Nice, he has the tactical reload with it. All right, now let's go ahead and test the Killer 7 on a Chainsaw Ganado. <laughs> Can't get too close. All right, so it only took three shots from the Killer 7 to defeat the Chainsaw Ganado with no upgrades. Makes sense considering it does have five points more of firepower than the Broken Butterfly does. Alrighty, now let's go back to the merchant, get your full price, and then test it again with full upgrades. Alright, so let's sell the Killer 7 with a peculiar price of 38850 That's because its purchase price is kind of special. Here we are, check that out. Kind of like the OG, you buy it for 77,700 pesetas. <laughs> it's expensive. Honestly, this might be the only gun you need. Yep, he does have a special line with that. Not all out there, but hey, at least it was unique. All right, so now let's tune it up and see how much it's gonna cost us. It's probably gonna be a very expensive one. Here we go. Ah, dazzled, are you? <laughs> Our craftsmanship demands no less. Try that on for size. There you are, as you wish. See how that feels, mate. Fellow like yourself should notice the difference right away. 
All right, so check this out. The exclusive upgrade for the Killer 7 is a five times multiplier of the critical hit rate. <laughs> I personally find this exclusive upgrade to be one of the weakest of the entire game. I feel like they could have done better, like either with the firepower or maybe the capacity or something, but the critical hit rate when magnums tend to be critical in almost all circumstances, I think this was a missed opportunity here. But let's go ahead and fully upgrade it. Well, we've given this one all we have to give. With the hey, this will attribute to the explosive critical headshot that I'll do later with it. So there's that going for it, I guess. All right, now let's test it out. One of the most noticeable improvements is the fire rate now. There you go. Now let's test this beast on the chainsaw Ganado. <laughs> All right, only two shots with the Killer 7 to defeat the Chainsaw Ganado with full upgrades on the Killer 7. Almost ran into that tripwire just now. <laughs> he knocked me backward. All right, now to test the explosive critical headshot with the Killer 7. Here we go. This should be nice. Damn, headshot. All right. Well, that is going to conclude the Killer 7. Now for the final Magnum, the hand cannon. And of course, this is modeled after the Smith & Wesson M500, which is my favorite Magnum in the entire Resident Evil franchise. God, it looks glorious. And here it is in game, a Magnum revolver. Its extra-large X-frame was built to handle the muzzle velocity of the strong cartridge and deliver some serious firepower. Now, regardless of all that, I'm noticing that this has the weakest starting firepower of all the Magnums, so <laughs> that's very counterintuitive, I have to say. Alright, here it is compared to its OG counterpart. And of course, as I mentioned already, the real-life counterpart of this is the Smith & Wesson Model 500. All right, so the hand cannon, just like the OG, is an unlockable weapon. And in the remake, the original way to unlock it is to complete a new game in the main story on professional mode without using any bonus weapons. Once you do that, it would be unlocked. However, as soon as the Mercenaries DLC came out, another way to unlock it became available. If you get an S rank on all the stages with any character, you unlock the weapon then, which is dirt cheap easy in my opinion. I unlocked it on accident when I first played Mercenaries. That's just how easy it is to unlock it. Unlike the original Resident Evil 4 where there's many people who still to this day never unlocked it because they're not willing to go through the rigorous requirement of getting five stars on every stage with every character. I feel like it should have at least been that much required for the remake. Not just an S rank on every stage, but I feel like you should have been required to get an S rank on every stage with every character. Getting an S rank in the remake really isn't that difficult if you just maintain your combo or you defeat a good amount of enemies. And plus, dying doesn't even put down your score, unlike the original that just completely killed it if you died. So yeah, I think it's dirt cheap easy to get this weapon through mercenaries, but I still did the original requirement as a way of getting the challenge, because the challenge still applies so you can earn CP as well. Anyway, once you unlock it, just like the other two weapons here, you could buy it in the extra content shop in the weapons menu, and it also costs only 1000 CP. And then it will be available in the storage upon new game or new game plus. So here's Leon holding it, of course. <laughs> it is a beefy motherfucker. Nice. All right, let's test this thing out. Shit. <laughs> it's got a speed loader if it's not fully unloaded. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and test this thing on the Chainsaw Ganado. It's going to take the most amount of shots of the Magnum so far when it comes to no upgrades based on its firepower. Fuck. 
Finally. <laughs> All right, it took five shots from the hand cannon to defeat the Chainsaw Ganado. One more than the Broken Butterfly making sense with its firepower. All right, well, let's tune up this beast and test out its firepower and everything else about it after getting your full price. All right, let's sell the hand cannon for 25,000 pesetas. Of course, it's gonna rebuy it for a straight 50,000 pesetas. Oh, my stranger. <laughs> What you need that for? Going hunting an elephant? <laughs> <laughs> word for word, the same. Now let's tune it up and see what we got going for us. There you are, as you wished. This kind of work, stranger, little bit goes a long way. You see. Try that on the size. There you are, as you wished. Try that on the size. Okay, so at this point I have to say that this weapon is somewhat underwhelming, especially compared to its OG counterpart. But this right here, the exclusive upgrade, is probably the only place where it really shines. Just like the Chicago Sweeper, the exclusive for the hand cannon is ammunition never runs out. It becomes truly infinite to where you never have to reload. Alright, so let's go ahead and purchase the exclusive upgrade. Probably one of the cheapest exclusives out there. And now that is a top-notch weapon. You really don't settle for anything less than the best. All right, so now let's examine it. There you go. And yes, now it has unlimited ammunition, and I can't reload it at all. Okay, so if you equip Leon with his pinstripe outfit and use the unlimited hand cannon, he also has a special reload animation just like the Chicago Sweeper. Check this out. I honestly like that tons more than the Chicago Sweeper. Alrighty. So, let's now go ahead and test this thing on the Chainsaw Ganado. All right, so only two shots with the hand cannon to defeat the Chainsaw Ganetto. Go figure, with its firepower now, it's almost as powerful as the Broken Butterfly with full upgrades. Except the Broken Butterfly actually comes out on top in terms of raw firepower with its exclusive upgrades. That's where I think they really missed out with this weapon. Like, I appreciate the unlimited ammunition, that's always fun. But I would have rather taken the buff to the firepower again, just like it's OG. Or be like the OG, do both the power and the ammunition. That would have been the way to do it justice. So ultimately, I find this weapon kind of underwhelming and I don't like it as much as its OG counterpart, unfortunately. Personally, I think my favorite Magnum is the Broken Butterfly. Fully upgraded, I have to say. All right, that's it for regular testing. Now, of course, we gotta do the Magnum Tradition with it as well. And this is the one I would have done if I had not decided to do all the Magnums, because even though it's not technically the most powerful Magnum, it's the beefiest Magnum, and the critical headshot with this will match all the others I've done in the past. Before that, I did have to show severing the body with this Magnum. <laughs> that's almost just as good as an explosive headshot. Headshot! That was the best one, in my opinion, honestly. All right, now I showed all three Magnums with the explosive headshot. So the real question is, which one is getting the honor of going into my intro? Well, I have to say, I'm gonna use the hand cannons because with that explosive blowback and recoil, that's the best looking headshot, I have to say. And I already recorded it, as you saw anyway. So that's gonna be it. All right, well, that's gonna conclude the hand cannon as well as all magnums. Now, we gotta compare all the magnums to each other real quick. And I'll make.